Hello, I'm John Grum, and welcome to our 104th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our discussion panels twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded discussion. Today our panel will discuss the highly volatile question of what to do about Korea. Today's panel, beginning on my left, is Brian Laba, president of R&B Financial Services. On his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher and member of the Wadsworth City Council. On her left is Jerry Ritzman, co-founder of Ritzman Pharmacies. And on his left is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist. Beginning with you, Brian, it seems that every president faces a decision that defines his presidency. What to do about North Korea, whose leaders appear to have nuclear weapons and the means to deliver them, and has threatened to do so, appears to be the current president's moment. With millions of lives in harm's way, what would you do as president? This is a bigly problem. A bigly problem. Bigly problem. Uh, uh, I was going <laughs> to try to do part of my Trump impersonation, but uh, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't. Um, I think I would put so much pressure on China that they would have to intervene because China is the key to North Korea. Um, if it wasn't for China, there would be no North Korea. North Korea exports over 70% of their goods and services to China. They import well over 80% from China. And um, I would probably go with a little op-ed piece, I believe it was in the Wall Street Journal. I'd start pulling visas, student visas, um, from uh, over 300,000 Chinese nationalists that are here in this country studying at our universities. Some of those have to be part of the communist elite families that run China. Um, there's just, you know, they come here under different names, but they belong to Communist Party officials, uh, you know. Would you consider that a sanction? Uh, yeah, you could consider it a sanction. Okay, I, I would so start sending them home. Uh, and uh, when they got home, uh, I would let them know that they're being sent home because of China's lack of, of, uh, <laughs> uh, of real engagement in the North Korean problem. And, uh, you know, they would understand that. I think the Chinese would understand that. Um, and uh, I think China will need to really step up and, uh, and limit uh, this uh, brutal dictator's uh, desire to, uh, you know, achieve a status of having a nuclear weapon. We're not quite sure if he has a nuclear weapon just as of yet, but he had a, some very successful tests ICBM tests uh, over the last uh, several weeks. Um, if the one last rocket was put on a trajectory, it would probably have reached uh, Alaska. Uh, Alaska, what they said. Uh, but uh, all of that uh, technology comes from the rogue states. Um, it wasn't that long ago that North Korea couldn't get a rocket off the ground, let alone have the capacity to uh, create a nuclear weapon, but uh, we've seen uh, because I believe China's just sort of let them do this. And you uh, think they're helping them? Uh, I think they're probably de facto helping them by not stepping in and, uh, and telling them, no, you cannot mm. have a nuclear weapon. I think they're turning a blind eye. They probably have some sort of help uh, with uh, the technology behind that. Um, but, um, you know, North Korea and even some of the statements as far as what North Korea wants and what China will accept as far as, you know, South Korea becoming part of North Korea, that's never going to happen. Um, that, that will never happen. Uh, we're, you know, they're not going to step back into Fred Flintstone ages. What about uh, the other way around? Uh, I think that's the only way out. I think a slow, uh, a, a, a slow uh, progression towards democracy uh, and, and, bring, capitalism. and capitalism, bringing that country. <laughs> um, you know, if you've seen those satellite pictures of at night of North Korea and South Korea, yeah. it's a <laughs> dark Amazing, hole, <laughs> you yeah. know, past the 38th parallel. You see light, lights around the capital. Yeah, yeah. Pyongyang. And then when you have, you know, compared to South Korea, those people, you know, North Korea would be so much better off if they would just decide we're going to get rid of these crazy people that have been running our country for the last 80 years or 70 years and, uh, and embrace sort of what China has done with their own economy and their own population. They're slowly introducing capitalism 
even though there are certain areas, human rights and all that kind of stuff, they still have a long way to come. But, you know, you've got to do something because uh, that, that country is... And they saved millions of people from starving to death right. with limited capitalism. Right, you know, you know. right. So that's, that's my, <coughs> that would be part of what, what I would do is I would, I would bring uh, so much pressure to bear on China mm -hmm. um, and uh, they would know from top to bottom that it was not acceptable for uh, North Korea to, uh, to have or be able to uh, uh, develop uh, any sort of nuclear uh, capability. I don't care for whatever reason, uh, power or, you know, whatever they're saying, uh, you know, they, they would not be able to, uh, to have that. Patty, I'm going to give you an opportunity to voice an opinion that I think you're going to love to voice. Okay. All right. I'm talking about the... Uh, the sophistication that's going to be required diplomacy-wise, strategy-wise. What do you think about President Trump's statement on Korea? We're going to have to end this nonsense once and for all. Well, I, I don't think very much of it because <laughs> I, I, very honestly, don't know that he... Today was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what you wanted. Um, I, I don't believe that he has a grasp on the, the conditions in North Korea, and he does not have the experience or the wherewithal to handle the diplomacy that is necessary in a situation such as this. And in, you know, I, I agreed with so much of what Brian said. You know, China is the key because they are the ones that control uh, North Korea, and we need to work with China in order to have them step in. And Trump realizes this. I just don't think he can get there. I know mm -hmm. he keeps quoting his art of the deal, but mm -hmm. fails to mention that it was written by somebody else. But okay, okay, calm yeah, down. Well, I just wanted yeah. to give you a little opportunity. <laughs> little opportunity. Okay, yeah. I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> hey, I need to do my impersonation, so you got to. Yeah, I can't do that. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree with you know, the inf uh, influence of China. I, I do think that sanctions, more sanctions are necessary, and you mentioned the word sanctions. Mm -hmm. You know, I found that we have imposed more sanctions, many more sanctions upon Iran than we've ever done upon North Korea. So perhaps there are other sanctions, and one of the things we can do is, and they've actually tried this in the past, and it was you, a you mean the sanctions to help curtail the Iranian nuclear program? Is that what you're talking yes, about? Okay. Yes, and so. More than we ever did with Korea. Korea, yeah, and we have not done that. Um, but we, we can do, but another thing you do is you go after the money. Uh, uh, the North Korean regime yeah. has a great deal of money outside of North Korea. A, a great deal of it is in Macau. And uh, the government has gone after it and frozen some of those assets, but then they release them. Maybe they need to freeze those up. Um, I, my, my big concern, obviously, is Kim Jong-un, who is the leader of North Korea, and we're not dealing with somebody that's playing with a full deck here. Um, he has he is a, has a brutal dictatorship. He runs concentration camps, you know, that rival the Nazi concentration camps hmm. in his own country. Um, he feels has no problem with brutally killing his uncle because he stood against him politically, and not only his uncle, exactly. but all all of his uncle's family, um, you know, nieces and nephews and, and the whole nine yards, uh, his, his older brother, who he didn't think was fit. I mean, there, there is, you know, obviously there would be an option to try to assassinate, I don't think I should say that out loud, but to assassinate him. But um, I'm, not, I'm not calling for that, but as long as he is in power, you're dealing with someone who is not, does not consider reality a friend of his. Um, you know, the, all the claims of, you know, the, the claims that he has made about himself are, are, are totally ridiculous. But how that we go about controlling him and ebbing him, I, one way I think might be with the money, um, with the increased sanctions, and also, the United and boy, I hate war, and I, I do not want us to get involved into a, another war. And, and I'm not advocating this, especially not in Korea again. But we need to show our strength and to assist South Korea because even if 
you know, North Korea does have a nuclear weapon that could, or any weapon that could reach Alaska, we know they can reach South Korea. I mean, Seoul is right on the border. It would be nothing to take out that. And we do have to help <coughs> our allies defend themselves against this power. Okay. I want to circle back and uh, discuss the assassination <coughs> option with you. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, Jerry, where are you coming from on this topic? Uh, Brian and Patty, it's all, you're complicating the whole issue. Uh, very simple. Let's get Dennis Rodman <laughs> and Donald Trump together and send Dennis over there and solve this thing. He just went back there, didn't well, he? Well, you know, Dennis this, may be, this yeah. may be the solution to it. Yeah. But seriously, what I'll a, take my... What a duo. <laughs> I will take... I know he's I'll take my... He's a basketball huge basketball, basketball, basketball right, yeah, yeah, I, I will take... Get him season tickets to yeah. the Lakers. Right, there yeah, we go. There we go. Too, so. I'll yeah. uh, or, you know, maybe, you know, have, introduce him to LeBron or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But anyway, I'll take my tongue out of my cheek and take a look at pragmatic history. Uh, let's, let's look back at, at, at World War II. <clears throat> uh, we were allies with some people who were kind of unsavory, uh, particularly the Russians. And yeah. if it wouldn't have been for them, we may not have won World War II because of what they did on the Eastern Front and the yeah. number of people are there. So yeah. we have to realize that we can't be purists in whom we ally ourselves with in any particular effort, whether it's the Mideast and ISIS or whether it's in North <coughs> Korea. So we need to know that. Let's take a look at what brought the Berlin Wall down. <clears throat> it was not a conflict, but it was a very strong alliance. It was uh, <clears throat> some persistent uh, resistance and uh, persistent uh, uh, show of strength against the Soviet Union. And I think finally we bankrupt them into submission. With the strategic defense. Right, edition, with whatever, whatever strong yes. defenses that we built up. Uh, so we have to realize that. Uh, and and uh, it, I think we really need, and, I, and, to, and I'm in total agreement with, we've got to get China involved in some way. And then we've got to build other alliances <clears throat> outside of there that shows that we're, we're standing strong here with, uh, with whatever Southeast uh, Asia treaty alliances that we have or organizations that we have, is that, <clears throat> that we're, we're, there's solidarity there and we're not gonna, not gonna let this go on. But mm -hmm. yeah, China, China's the key and it's gonna take some very skilled diplomacy uh, to get them involved, but mm -hmm. I but I think that's it, and 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 keep Dennis out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Share your thoughts, Ron. I come from a position of pessimism here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Diplomacy. Well, barring the uh, inability of our present administration to punch their way out of a wet paper bag, and oh, please, like thing I think uh, <laughs> it's not really a very good option at this point with China because China wants us out of South Korea. They want the American influence out of South Korea, as That's does true. Russia. Yeah. And they're being very reluctant here. The present threat on the ICBM, uh, their ICBM is on a mobile transporter. That mobile transporter has been supplied by China. So all of that's kind of going on. Uh, so a couple of <laughs> things, sanctions. I'm pessimistic about sanctions because sanctions, in a despotic regime, the sanctions don't hurt the despotic regime. They just hurt the rest of the people. Yeah. And well, there probably are some some positive benefits for that, but uh, in a humanitarian sense, they don't work very well. Because I, I don't think, from, from what I can observe around the world, they sometimes have some benefits, but it's 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 a it's a tricky road. Um, Diplomacy, well, again, I don't sure that that's such a good idea or is it really going to work here. Uh, armed conflict, Donald Trump says, we'll get in and do it if China won't. Well, I agree, we need to put some pressure on China and eventually it may come to that. It probably should come to that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's, if we go in on armed intervention, we're, we've got another Iraq on our hands. 
Yeah. Secondly, uh, North Korea has a large amount of artillery on the demilitarized zone ready to blast the heck out of South Korea, and that's right. the Korean citizenry and the U.S. troops, uh, many thousands of U.S. troops stationed in South Korea. Oh, 28. Uh, 28,000. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, these are American citizens. We've sacrificed them before, but, uh, you know, that's, that's a possibility. Uh, now, I think probably one of the things, at least in the short <clears throat> term, is what we've done with China when China developed nuclear capability, acquiescence. Let them have it. Uh, try to work on the diplomatic front, try to work on the economic front, try to, as said, bring them into capitalism slowly if, if possible, but I think that's a key here. I saw a video recently of somebody traveling in North Korea, in the capital city particularly, and the people there were relatively content. Now maybe it's Stockholm <laughs> syndrome where they're, where, where you know, they're, they're, they're <clears throat> identifying with their captors, yeah. but it was a fairly relaxed uh, uh, sort of social atmosphere there, not the deprivation that we're depicted here in, in the West. Now, on the countryside, as you say, you see a satellite picture at night and... No lights. Know, there's no lights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no big electrical network out there. If there is, people yeah. can't afford to, run to, to burn the electricity. So acquiescence, I think, at least in the short term, uh, rather than uh, truculent comments by our our esteemed president for life, uh, as Vladimir Putin might call him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this is possibly what we're going to have to do here. I think uh, that's called you, strategic patience. Yes, yeah. strategic <laughs> patience. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, I, I mean, I guess my total last option would be any kind of armed conflict. I think for any yeah. of us, yeah. it would. Yes. That would yeah. could. Well, yeah, it'd be, Ron, you'd, your pessimism would drive you to build a bomb shelter. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <probably>. That's <laughs> what I've... My in-laws had one. I think World that's War. probably your next project. <laughs> <I> <laughs> During the Cold War, my in-laws <laughs> fitted out their basement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hmm. When you think about what North Korea wants, what South Korea wants, what China wants, um, it's almost an it, it's an impasse. Right. Uh, the uh, North Koreans, um, understandably, would like to see an end to the Korean War. It has never ended. Right. We had an armistice. They would like to see uh, a, a a peace treaty. They would like to see twenty eight thousand troops removed from uh, South Korea, and then the most intractable demand of all One is country. to unite the peninsula with the uh, under North Korean rules. Mm. <coughs> South Korea's um, desires is almost a flip-flop exactly. of that. And that uh, China is almost a, a, a hybrid uh, of that. Very, very difficult. But let's talk about assassination. Uh, it, was an out, it was outlawed during the Kennedy, or, or after the Kennedy regime, when it was discovered that the um, Kennedy regime had uh, Castro. gotten involved with the mafia to get eliminate Castro, and so we decided we uh, were, we were horrified at such a thing, and decided to pass a law against that, which resulted in us not being able to assassinate Saddam Hussein, and it's cost millions of lives, uh, thousands of Americans, but a lot of a lot of Iraqis. <clears throat> it seems to me that assassination should be a viable alternative if we're, if we're dealing with someone who is viewed as a mentally unstable, totally obsessed with his own needs and desires and so forth. Having said that, well, I, I, well let, 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 let me just finish yeah, this one thought. The one thing that China and Korea, South Korea fear even more than irresponsible use of nukes is a collapse of the North Korean regime and, and facing millions of refugees across their borders. Mm -hmm. uh, th th they're more afraid of that than nuclear war. I don't know how assassinating um, uh, Il, uh, Kim Jong-un 
uh, yeah, we'll would yeah. uh, what the aftermath of that would be, whether it would be um, you know the mass refugees and so forth. I, yeah, I, I think um, <coughs> even though it sounds like an alternative uh, way out of this on its face, I, I think that whole um, mess is a little deeper than just him. You know, you could take him out and there would be somebody else in the military. Maybe there needs to be some sort of um, a military coup where he gets removed and the military in a, it, for, a, for a period of time brings the country to a point where they can uh, have elections, they can have uh, some freedom to keep the people in the country, uh, not by force, but you know, open up the borders. Sort of what, you know, even though when they, they took the wall down in Berlin, those people were free to come and go. Uh, the Soviets had a pretty good understanding as to what had, what had to happen. They didn't, you know, they, 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 they relaxed a lot of the restrictions. So there was a transition period over a period of time where the people realized that they weren't going to go back and build another wall. They weren't going to go back to the old way and that they would have an opportunity to transition into more of the West, the Western way, you know, uh, West Germany and, 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 and to, to solve that problem that way. So I think through diplomacy, you know, someone needs to sit down with those people that are pulling the strings and say, listen, you know, this can't go on and we need to find a, uh, an acceptable way for you to either step down and retire somewhere and, um, He'd never do it on his own. Well, I know he would never yeah. do that. But that's why. That's why the the notion that, you know, the military, which basically has been supporting him, without the military, he's really nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and uh, you know, maybe there's a back door there somewhere that uh, the Chinese have to say, you know, it's it's time for him to go. He's created yeah. more and, of a headache. For and us. I don't see an uprising <coughs> of the people because, no, in many cases, they're not even aware of the fact. Yeah that things are as bad as they are. You know, one other solution that I had read about was a possible thing to do to curb the nuclear advancement is through the use of malware and viruses. And I, I guess this has been done with other countries. Mm -hmm. There, You infect all of the systems they're using and it, if nothing else, slows them you down. You mean like the electrical grid and, <laughs> and all that, or? No, it's, it's Just, like the, the malware that they inserted, uh, was it Iran? <laughs> they, yeah, they did it in Iran. They put <clears throat> that malware and, and it sent them back five, six years because it pretty much just wiped out. In the <laughs> development of nuclear. Right, yeah. right, their capabilities, so. the computers that they were using, and um, you mm. know, so yeah. That that, could be which a, is another <coughs> option. I, I, you know, the assassin, <coughs> and when I mention that, it's not something obviously that I would advocate myself, but I, I, that, is, that is an option, I guess, for the people of North, North Korea. But as I said, I don't think that they're in a position <coughs> to do that. Now, you know, when you talk about the sanctions and hurting the North Korean people, if they became angry enough, mm -hmm. then perhaps they would. Um, I always <coughs> worry about a military <coughs> takeover because those have not always turned out that well in countries where that has occurred. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem that the uh, you know the military taking over and then having elections a few later years later has has yeah. worked very well. It's in not a natural places. segue. No. No, no. <laughs> but China could. I, I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of possibilities with China that you know they they're they're pretty much. If, controlling the puppet over there. If, and, if they want to. Uh, if and, they wanted to, yeah. But they have the same, you know, hopes and right. dreams as North Korea does. You know, you talk yeah. about the United North and South Korea. That's what mm -hmm. China wants. And China right. wants them yeah. with North Korea as the head. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and all the American troops gone. And, exactly. And, and a nuclear-free peninsula. Yeah. Now, that, that sort of leaves the question open as to what, what kind of nuclear capability does South Korea have? I mean, is it, are there nuclear weapons in South Korea that are owned and operated by the United States? Or the, I, you know, I, I don't know I don't the answer know. to that. Ron had mentioned something about the uh, attitude and the knowledge and all of the population of, uh, of North Korea. And uh, when you think back, uh, there's nobody alive 
in North Korea that can remember anything resembling a democracy. Uh, they've been yeah. under control of the Japanese, cruelly so, since 1910. Uh, and uh, then, uh, in, since 1945, um, uh, when the Japanese were, you know, unconditionally surrendered, uh, they became under the control of a communist uh, regime sponsored by uh, Russia. Uh, what in the world would those people do? I mean, uh, we, we saw in, uh, in Iraq the Purple Thumb Day, uh, but it didn't really uh, a allow democracy to sink in. Well, the rush to democracy, I think, is, is, a, is an error. Mm -hmm. As we did in Libya, we did in places yeah. like that. People, <coughs> they don't under, it's not fully understood, it's not yeah. internalized. It's it, it, thinking it, that this is just plain not workable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we and, saw and this in place. Vietnam and, and so too. Yeah. It, there would have to be some type of controlled transition uh, over a period of time and let the desire for democracy come from within mm -hmm. rather than imposed from without, mm -hmm. is my thought. Yeah. I'm not a member of the diplomatic corps, so I could be. But well, this is the totally problem off. China's had for the last, <laughs> you know, 50, Frank, 70 you know, years as their, right. as their population <laughs> begins to <laughs> understand what other people have and, and the freedoms that other people enjoy. They want that too. And instead of creating a no win situation for everybody, China is slowly letting those people, you know, participate in a variety of activities, coming and going, and all that kind of stuff. And if they're beginning to back away, even though there are some areas where they really need some work on. They're, they're really loosening the grip uh, slowly mm -hmm. so that they maintain, you know, their own, uh, I guess, control over the situation. But, you know, Korea needs to, uh, North Korea needs to establish some mm -hmm. sort of a runway. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, they, the people, though, in many cases do not care what the political philosophy is. What they are concerned with is, do I have food in my belly? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And we saw this in Vietnam. And as long as they are fed and clothed, they, in many cases, do not care if it's communist, capitalist, mm -hmm. whatever. Thank you very much. There is no quote to end this program today. <coughs> but uh, this was um, um, a good program, and I thank you.